And welcome back to the IWAR Network TubeCast. I'm your host, Lex G, NWL Commissioner. And with me, as always, is IWAR Commissioner, Matt Riley. How are you doing tonight, Matt? Oh, I'm just dandy. El Dandy? El Dando. Don't disrespect El Dandy. The world's worst <laughs> gimmick, El Dandy. That's Dan Dapper Dandy. He slept with Lita, according to uh, the internet. Dapper Dandy did? No, uh, El Dandy. Uh, him. him too, maybe. <laughs> so this episode will be the September cycle and review. So we're going to start off with the BRL. So league champion, we have Sir Gunter Kinderwatt. Television, Ghostly Shadows. Atlantic, Rugged, Rick Ross. Central, Randy the Ram. Dixie, Luther Alexander. Eastern, Magnus Ver Magnuson. Mountain, Matt's Latin girlfriend, Rosa. Northern, Staff Sergeant Max Frightmaster. Pacific, El Barbaro. Prairie, Commander Hack Vanderslide. Southern, Rude Duty. Western, Roughneck Nikki Rock. Tag Team Jury and Staff Sergeant Mac Frightmaster. TV Tag, Private Slate McRock. Commander Hack Vanderslide. Six Man. Hot Stuff Adam Cash, Luther Alexander, and Fatty the Butcher. Hell yeah! TV Six Man, Patrick O'Malley, Agent 26, and Punk Rock Mike. So, Matt, anything stand out in the BRL of this cycle? Well, I think that the uh, Six Man Championship held by Luther Alexander and Blood Money, very good because, you know, we beat... Three thugs. <laughs> no, it, it's it's always great when championships change hand and rivalries because it helps build up things. So it was a good win over the Canadian Nation guys. Yeah. So well, you'll be hearing more about that in the next uh, hot takes, <laughs> if not more. Uh, happy to see Luther Alexander up there. Randy the Ram, good to see him doing well. Ghostly Shadows really bouncing back to form. Sir Gunter, of course, his eighth championship. God damn. Yep, eight championships and all of those for iwa credits Jeez. so that's eight times like, let's say an average of 30 bucks you know that's a little bit of sweet coin there he probably hasn't have paid for a match in like six months i know he really builds it up yeah good for him we dig it yeah so this is the uh cycle before adam R. anarchy correct yes yes this is the cycle of the matches where automatically were held mm-hmm do you want to review the card for the fine folks at home? Sure, I can do that. I won't give away the winners so no. you know, when you see the results in the next issue. Iowa Ringside Magazine. Uh, our official final card. All right, so our matches include for Autumn Anarchy 6. And I will say Autumn Anarchy is one of those pay-per-views. It's kind of like the SummerSlam to WWF's WrestleMania because it always seems to be a big show. You know, the fall show really comes out well. So, our main event, both Iowa championships being defended, Sir Gunter Kinderwacht defending against Black Predator. He was a ladder match battle royal winner at a Magic Bash. Taking a page from the IWL, we're using that formula where, you know, you win an event, you get a shot kind of thing. Ghostly Shadows versus Senior Lucha in a casket match. Best of seven series, match six, the Saskatchewan Sasquatch versus the Bold Gray Fox, Chief Bold Gray Fox. Their series has been going on for a while, and there's a shot at the IOR Championship in the balance. Nice. Eight-man tag match, Noble House, the Black Superstar, Bobby Bedlam, Tony Dime, Jimmy Henchman, and Roughneck Nicky Rock facing Sir Gunter Kinderwacht, Superstar Rick Riley, Age of 26, and Punk Rock Mike, also known as the Ribbon Hell Savages. I haven't actually tallied up the m- match totals yet for this, so I will do that probably tomorrow. That will be written up tomorrow as well. We have a last man standing match with Agent 26 versus Fatty the Butcher. If you're a fan of the Iowa, you may remember that at Imagine Bash, Blood Money took out Agent 26 from the ladder match by having Fatty splash him through a table off the top rope. Nice. That was not a good time for his ribs. We have a barbed wire fire bucket match, which is between the Moonshiners, Elijah the Mountain Man, and uh, Willie the Wild Woodman uh, against uh, Leather Brigade, Frank Hilton and Snow, and Dark Phoenix FS. And that is sure to be a wild one. The Canadian strap match with 500,000 thumbtacks on the mat. Uh, 
<laughs> Blood Money versus the Molsons. And that's a surefire, gruesome match. They're looking for some revenge because we took out their pal Jimmy North. Yeah. Submission challenge match, El Barbero versus FL Slobberknocker. And flag match, Canada versus Spain, Randy the Ram and Lumberjack, Zach James versus King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. And in a special remote location in Russia, the Russian death match. Rude Duty faces Luther Alexander in his home turf. You can perhaps talk about that actual match and the parameters. Yeah, so what I'm thinking, someone will probably die, first and foremost. I hate having death matches and no one die. But yeah. just kidding. So the Russian death match will be taking taking place in an empty arena in uh, Russia and one of their poorest neighborhood in Russia. So the match itself will be the ring itself will be in the middle of a giant swimming pool. the pool itself will be filled with piranhas and electric eel the ring will have a cage surrounding it that will be electrified the ropes will be barbed wire the corners and turnbuckles will be placed with boards with barbed wire and they will be wired to c4 explosives there will be broken glass scattered around the ring and weapons throughout the cage, hanging from the cage. So it's a good possibility that someone will be seriously injured in this match. And it will be awesome. <laughs> That'll be fun to read. Yes. I will say, there's a lot of great matches. I've already had some of the write-ups come in to me. I've got about three matches to write myself. And then i got to kind of wait and see if other people are running their matches. But this should be a lot of fun. It's going to be interesting because one of the tasks is I give myself four, I give ourselves four pages to work with. So cram in the excitement. <laughs> and not a spoiler, but a, a teaser, there is a big, big thing happening at Autumn Anarchy. So surprise, it, surprise, surprise. You will want to tune in slash read it. And, uh, and if you're not in the Bureau, this would be a good cycle. Pay a dollar and get a bulletin. Yeah, yeah, check it out. BRL, I will say, BRL-wise, just trash talk-wise, it's it's not so much hit or miss as much as it is getting better, but there, are, what we were talking about before was the, uh, you know, leading to the traffic cop, because there's yeah. so much going on. So the new uh, page of the IWAR was the Shooter's Gallery. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how that goes over. But that's just a way to kind of keep track of all the things going on. Because there's a lot of history there, a lot of feuds. When we checked out that AWL episode and we saw how they had the history of the titles, I was like, oh, we should do that. So I might put something together like that and kind of show some of the histories. Yeah. And I know you just, post, you just posted the uh, history of the IWAR Championship not too long ago. Yeah. yeah. And as uh, I think I just I noted in the next issue that uh, Gunter just broke Connick's record for longest reign. <laughs> The guy's unstoppable. I don't know anyone's going to beat him at this point. The only one's able to beat him is Sinha Lucha. And uh, that didn't work out well for him in the end. It no. was, I still have my favorite memories is when uh, they were fighting their cage match and Lucha hit the million peso knee lift and fell out of the cage to win. <laughs> <laughs> fell to the table. He's like, he's like the tackling dummy. He's just always getting beat up and pummeled and bloodied. Yeah. Uh, oh, poor guy. Yeah. Bless his heart. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, also also noteworthy, Mad Dog Dick Jackson, IWA uh, wrestler for since 1987. First he was the Mass Marvel, then he was, you know, Dick the Dog Jackson, then Mad Dog Dick Jackson on Hot Takes announced he's going to retire. So it's the end of an era. I'm calling it a career. He's he's one of my old time favorites, but I, I out of uh, behind the scenes, after a while, certain characters you just kind of hit a point. Where you're like, what do I what can I do with them? You know, what else can I do? And Dick Jackson's been good. He's been bad. He's been good. Uh, you know, he's had lots of feuds. I think the best feud he ever had was either his feud with Rick Challenger. Uh, he's had a lot of good ones. His feud with Hades was fun because uh, Hades was a guy who was like one of those guys who was just really good but didn't talk very much. Mm. But when he did, it was cool. And he had the Ultimate Ninja feud. Uh, the best thing with him was when we were in the NDL together. And I think it was Costa Estafio who managed the Ultimate Ninja. And he and I, like, are, are, like, his ultimate ninja and Dick the Dog Jackson traded the league title, like, for, like, eight cycles. Like, it went back. He had two cycles. I had two cycles. He had one cycle. I had one cycle. He had three cycles. Like, it was, like, boom, 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 boom. It was, it was kind of cool, you know? And then, of course, it was the BRL feuds, Bobby Blanchard, 2013, when um, Chris Capps brought back guys from the CCL from the 87 wrestling feuds. So it was a lot of fun. But after a while, you kind of hit a point where you're like, what else can I do with this guy, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, like, with Ethereal Guardian, 
when he decided to retire him, he had kind of done as much as he could do with him. He had three championship Iowa runs. He had, you know, plenty of good feuds, but I think artistically at a certain point you have a, a, a breaking point or, a, you know, you run out, the well runs dry. And I've had that happen with other wrestlers, but with Dick Jackson, it just kind of ran his course. And I thought, you know, I probably should put somebody in the Hall of Fame and start getting that going, you know? Hmm. So uh, Dick Jackson will officially go into the Ottawa Hall of Fame, I think, this cycle. i got to send them an email about that and officially make it happen, but it's going to be official probably this cycle next. There's still plenty of room. You know, people obviously like, oh, well, it's really packed. Uh, but there's lots of good talent here, and, uh, you know, you can get in there and get in and be part of the mix. Yeah. Patrick O'Malley returned. He was here for a while. And he came back, and he's kind of he was he was here, went to the ASL, I think some of his cells too. Then he came back, and now he's teamed up with the Suburban Hell Savages. So I'll be giving him grief. Hmm. Sad to see Money Driven Mike Seb- Sebastian inactive. He's one of my favorites, and he just hasn't really uh, been active. Also inactive, oddly enough, was uh, the enforcer Eric Davis and Numbers. Hmm. Highly unlikely, unusual, I guess. Yeah. Highly unlikely would be what Gr- Gorilla Monsoon would say. Yes. Inactive? Highly unlikely. <laughs> Will you stop? Yes. A lot of, <laughs> I said during my soccer coach, uh, I was coaching the other day, and I said to the kids as we were stretching, they're like, oh, my leg hurts. I'm like, you're stretching that lateral collateral muscle. <laughs> they didn't get it. They're kids. Yes. Uh, so BRL-wise, lots of action going on. Really, you know, if you check out the IOR magazine, you'll see a recap of what's going on. But I really do recommend the BRL. Check it out. See what it's like. Going on, and I will say, uh, so far the response has been very positive about the new ranking system. And just to get, I have a lot of questions about it. The way we rank the wrestlers now for the various commissioner championships, little nutshell, is the global champion as their intercontinental champion, then the Canadian champion, and the global tag champions. We take your wrestler or tag team strategy over the last three cycles and divide it by three, so that your average that's showing is your last three cycles average. So, for example, Hasif Adam Cash at a 494, I think he's now like a 494.8 now. So it's bumped up a little. So, like, if you keep doing well, you'll get ranked up higher. Well, the better your strat average, the better your ranking. So if you have a great average, you're going to take on the global champion. If you have a, a pretty good average, you're going to take the IC champion. And if you're still working your way up, you have a Canadian championship to go for. And I think what this what this is doing is that it, Gives a platform for multi-level players. Yeah. So if you're not the best player, like if you're not Sir Gunter Kinderwalk, you're not like, oh man, there's nothing I can go for, you know. And that's that's what the Canadian Championship is there for. And I will say, right now, Canadian Hammer Gunner Molson has both the IC and the Canadian Championship. There's that. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the BRL uh, system. Play along, you'll have fun. Uh, that, yeah, that. All right, fantastic. So next up, we have the CWL Unified Fergus Brennan Streaming Media Clark Pierpont United States Furious Dragon Yukon Axel Von Schnapp Yay Caribbean Big Joe Amazon Basin Goliath O'Brien British Uh Isles Great White Dragon Arabian Darius T. Roughshod South African, Toxic. Siberian, Battlin, Brian Kelly. East Asian, Hazard, Oceanic, Koenig. Unified Tag Team, Alex Van Schnapp, Axel Van Schnapp. Streaming Media, Black Predator, Silverback Jack, Black Wrestlers Matter. Unified Six Man, Victor, Alex, and Axel Van Schnapp. And Streaming Media, Six Man, you have Railroad Warrior, Hammer, Ty and Spike. So what's the good word with the CWL? Well, it's going through some transition. I will first say that I'm you know, happy to see the Von Schnapps get back in a title form. They were kind of out of it for a while. So they regained the tag and the six-man. And it was one of those things where I was like, oh, man, finally. Because <laughs> for a while, <laughs> it just wasn't happening. And I think, I think that's the 15th tag title. I gotta look it up. It's like it's like fifteenth or fourteenth. Unbelievable. And for six man, it's like the eighteenth or something like that in the CWL in the last three years. 
So they're on a they're on a good run. But um, it's a tight race the rest of the year in that league, and it's it's really it's a fun league. It really is. The one transition that's happening is the CWL Dynamite, which is sort of their online Raw show that was you know written out as an episode, is is kind of changing. Andy Koenig, who is the commissioner, you know he's teaching, he's taking school, he's got a lot going on, he's a family, so he's kind of pushed pumped the brakes a bit and reeled back. And he um, he is ma- making it more interactive with the internet, Facebook. So you know you can see reaction to the promos sent in. So I think it'll work really well actually because Andy's done a lot with the online aspect. Yeah. So the Facebook group is the CWL Network, and I want to put a link of it in the description of this video. So if you guys want to go check it out and uh, join the network, go right ahead. But looking at it right now, you know, it's fantastic. It is, you know, buzzing with activity currently. So um, that's nice to see. Next up is the IWL League. We have Scotty Flash, TV, Ali Atari, Appalachian, Eric Endgame, Coastal States, the main events, Dylan Matthews, Deep South, Sasha, Great Lakes, Chris Endgame. Great Plains, Captain Bud, Drunken Wasted, Gulf Coast, Rowdy Resingini, Mississippi Valley, Van Death Valen, Pacific States, Primetime, Alex Styles, Rocky Mountain, Craven Cross, Sunbelt, Aiden the Great, Tag Team, Van Death Valen, and The Shadow, Tony Lowen, TV Tag Team, Triple X, Extreme, Xavier Jimenez, and the main event, Dylan Matthews, Six Man, Phantom Striker, Van Death Valen, and the Shadow, Tony Lowen. TV Six Man, Captain Bud, Drunken Wasted, Rich Ron Bruiser, and Aiden the Greats. So what's the good word with the IWL? Well, there's a few good words. One is that Atari is the TV title. <laughs> Way to put yourself over. Yeah, I was, I was happy <laughs> to see that. Uh, I like Scotty Flash as the champion. He's one of those good guys that deserves a beating. Uh, That's the second one in uh, a couple of months, a couple seconds. Yeah, it was good to see Sasha back on the title page. Yeah. Sasha, managed by Dr. Monty Roach, one of my favorite managers, who I'd love to see more trash talk from. He's just... Do you remember when uh, Luther went to uh, Monty's house and stole Sasha's panties? <laughs> yes. That was good. That was a uh, good trash talk there. Good sneak attack. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess the big thing that's going on currently is the uh, continuation of the uh, Empire and Chaos and their group along with Koenig and the Great David and uh, some of their Creed Michaels and some of their buddies versus Revolution Extreme. Um, as we go into their pay-per-view, Fortune and Fired, which is this cycle as well. Kind of curious to see how it all plays out uh, next cycle. Will that be cycle 59? And also, uh, do you, you know, I think... That's really cool, but also, you want, do you want to talk about some of the changes coming up? Or Yeah. So, so, guys, we have a pretty huge announcement. Some of you may know this and some of you may not, but as of Cycle 60, James Ross will be stepping down as commissioner of IWL, and I will be stepping in as the commissioner of the IWL. Again, the IWL is my favorite league to play in, so I was super honored and humbled that uh, he would ask me to take over for him, so thank you for the opportunity. I won't let anyone down. <laughs> Hopefully. But some of the changes coming to the IWL are not a lot. So we're looking at a fresh coat of paint. So there will be some cosmetic changes to like post to post and some of the other things. Uh, There will be a new commissioner on air character and his group would come in. He's going to basically be a Bill Watts, straight lace, down the middle, impartial authority figure. Again, we want to get away from the heel authority figures because I think it's kind of passe at this point. Doesn't mean you can't get heat by for uh, making a, a ruling in favor of the heels because he's going to have to if it's going to be impartial. Right. But he's going to be fair. All the pay-per-views that you guys are used to in the IWO will stay the same. We're adding another one, which would be Lethal Lattery, um, which is a pay-per-view I did in the NWL. So that will be added to the mix. Um, I just got to figure out when exactly in the time of the year we're going to pull that one off, pull the trigger on that one. Other than that, again, no big changes. So there will still be no stable initials. The wrestling limit will stay intact, so nothing of that is changing. So, you know, we're hoping at, at this point, you know, with a fresh coat of paint and uh, bringing some new wrestlers here, and then we got the draft coming up as well, that we can be the second, maybe even the first, in terms of, you know, cards and matches in the IWA. Yeah. You know, not giving away anything for free. <laughs> not saying, right. come join, and I'm going to give you title shots. All the content. <laughs> that's how it works. <laughs> that's how it works. But if you want a competitive place to play that's going to be storyline-driven, 
trash talk driven, all that kind of good stuff, the IWL will be a uh, place for you. Nice. Yes. I think it's going to be fun. Yay. So I like to see, uh, it looks like Revolution Extreme is doing well on the title page here. We got the, the six man, we got the tag team picked up at Mississippi Valley, and the TV. Yay. Good stuff. Yes. Empire of Chaos, you know, they're, they're, they're stalwarts at this point. You know, they're, they're, they're fantastic. They picked up <laughs> <laughs> Pacific States, Coastal States, TV tag team. So, like, you know, it's, it's, it's not one-sided <laughs> at all. Um, these guys are just trading victories back and forth. So, uh, pretty stoked. I mean, overall, yeah. the trash talk, the cycle, you know, it was, it was actually much, a little bit bigger than it has been in the past. So I like to see that. The little guys, you know, coming out of their shell a little bit. So I like to see that. Yeah. Um, so we're kind of hoping that this will be a step in the right direction in terms of trash talk. So Yes. Because everything else is, 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 is fantastic in the league. And the trash talk that is there is really, really good. I just want to get more people involved is kind of the idea. Yeah. Yeah, definitely in that case. Yeah. The upcoming, excuse me, pay-per-view, Feast or Famine, or sorry, Fortune or Fired, keep getting that screwed up. Just a reminder, if you entered Fortune or Fired, the eight finalists are... Vicious Vincent Payne, The Great David, Eric Endgame, Chris Endgame, Liam Larrikin, Blackjack Robertson, Dungeon Master Gregward Snodgrass, and the Arabian Dream Ali Atari. And the way it's going to work, the Battle Royal in this coming edition, the 59th edition. So if you have the highest finish out of these eight wrestlers, you get an IWL heavyweight title shot. If you come in second, in the most, you know, second highest, you have a American Territory shot, third IWL heavyweight tag title shot, and the wrestler who comes in last out of those eight wrestlers gets fired and kicked out of the IWL. So that's and they have to go to a women's league. <laughs> <laughs> right, go there and you're forced to become a commissioner. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, if Atari loses it, you're gonna come back as the Midnight Arabian. <laughs> it might happen. Okay. We'll see. All right, guys. So next up, we have the NWL League. We have Fortune 500, Aaron McFleece. TV, Neo Dragon. Atlantic, Black Belt Jones. Central, Winston Smith Jr. Dixie, Johnny Vegas. Eastern, Vic Villain. Mountain, Big Blank Number 2. Northern, Psycho, Jerry Reigns. Pacific, Destroyer. Prairie, Killer Clown. Southern, Mr. Shots. Western, Billy Jack Novak. Tag Team, Fortune 500, Aaron McFleece, and Hostile Takeover. TV Tag Team, Jerome the Bone Smitty, and the Patriot. Six Man, Alpha Male, XD, Natalie Bowen, and the Patriot. And the TV Six Man, we have the Monroe family of Piper, Ulysses, and Marcus the Monster Monroe. So those are your champion. So, Matt, what do you notice of uh, this cycle on the NWO? I will say it was kind of cool that Aaron McFleece continued his way up the ladder, and he ended up beating or becoming the next champion after uh, Johnny Vegas, who he cut apart in his trash talk. Yeah. And they retained the tag titles, kind of a cool thing. So uh, this league is so funny. People always say things like, oh, you know, you set all those expectations. It's not realistic. We have such awesome players in the NWO. They, they keep stepping up. And providing awesome characters, good storylines. It's fun. It's a fun read. Like I'm, I'm there as an observer, pretty much, and I enjoy the trash talk. You know, I'm there just to kind of like help run the events and keep things going on. And it is just a fun league. And what's always kind of fun to me is the history they build here really does carry over to other leagues. Absolutely. I mean, you have the history between Luther Alexander and Koenig and uh, Rude Duty, Rowdy Restigini, Gotti Flash. You know, so many le- levels there. It's funny, like they go up as a group, and the right. group actually still interacts with each other long past their graduation dates. Right, and it's one of those things too that you know, and we always stress that you know you have 17 cycles in the I- uh, in the NWO, excuse me, and it's you know it's not meant as a punishment. It's just at a certain point you have to get promoted up because you've learned how to play the game. You know, and uh, we recently got an email from a player who was expressed his frustration. He was like. You know, I've been playing for a while, and I'm having trouble winning, and it's really frustrating because, you know, I want to do well. I want to be a big star. And what we always tell people is don't equate your good strategy with being a big star. Like, it's how you write and how you play the game that kind of establishes whether or not you're entertaining. I mean, yeah, someone might be 80, 
you know, wins and one loss, but they don't say a word they don't when they bring to the table. You know, I was like, oh, yeah. NWL-wise, give it time. There are a few things. So I, I, I gave a couple of tips, so I'll give them here. Number one, contact us and ask about, you know, how to do better. I'm happy to explain some ideas, some formulas I use, others use, to do well. And it's nice to see people doing well. Uh, we love, like, whenever the NWL comes out and does really well, we're like, yeah! Uh, but this one player was frustrated because he'd been trying hard. So here are a couple of easy formulas. Number one, you can, if need be, basically reboot your wrestler. What that means is you can take your wrestler's record, wins, losses, earnings, etc., and, you know, get rid of them and start over again. You're really just basically creating a new wrestler just with the same name. And the Autobody does it. It costs, I think it's $2 to do it, or $1. I forget. It's been a while. But there's a little fee that goes with it. So, fine. But it's a way to bring back your character in a new way. Now, some of the things you can do if you're creatively trying to find a way to, to reboot your character and have a better record, because, you know, you might learn some of the basics. So now you have a shot to, to get, get yourself a better record, a little better standing. So... What you want to do is a couple of things. One, you want to reboot your record and find a way to explain the absence or the start over. Because mm. if you do it with a new, the same record, the same wrestler, they're going to say, what happened? Oh, you just rebooted, you know. You could bring in a wrestler who's under a mask, face paint, some other thing, have them be your wrestler. And if things go horribly wrong, then you could, you know, always just dump that wrestler and start again. Yeah. <laughs> but... But if you want to bring him in with the mask, you know, he gives an opportunity for them to be a mask. It's like, oh, it's so-and-so. He's back. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. Or, you know, like you mentioned before, hey, I'm going to the uh, the deepest, darkest part of Africa. I want to learn some new maneuvers. Right. And come back, kind of reinvigorate it. You know, things like that you can definitely do in terms of a storyline and trash talk sense. Now, one of the things I like to do in terms of, you know, if you're looking to have a flashy record, Again, a flashy record doesn't mean anything unless you're in the top five. If you're in the top five, then guess what? You can challenge for a league championship. You can challenge and, and kind of get that done without going through the process of getting a regional championship. So one of the things I do in terms of when I'm picking my opponents is, first of all, I challenge everyone that has a championship. So league champion um, down to western champion. After that, it's just all scrub matches. There's no reason... You know, if you're ranked number 15 to wrestle the number 10 contender, there's no point unless you're in a feud with them. That's a different story. But that's just a one-off. But there's no point of wrestling anyone else if they don't have a belt. Right. So you kind of can get, you know, if you have a bad cycle, you can kind of avoid unnecessary losses that way. And I think that's a little underrated part of the game that, you know, no one really talks about. So for me, it's all champions, and then I go right into my scrubs or my super inactive wrestlers. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why I have Luther Alexander and the IWL is like 3,000 wins or something like that. Because that's that's a theory of mine. That's the way I play the game. I inflate my wins, and it's true. I do inflate my wins, but it's just for me to be in the top five. So if I get a 501 by chance, hey, guess what? League champion, and I have a better shot at I were a world champion because I don't have to go through the process. I'm not wasting a 501 on a Prairie championship. Right. Never know. Never know. Never. And, and, you know, really creatively, you can make up so many things. Plus, if you come in with a mask or whatever gimmick it might be, you can buddy up with someone and you can always turn on them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or you can, you know, buddy up with some bad guys, then, you know, turn around and be like, oh, yeah, well, I'm not that kind of guy. So there. So, <laughs> so one of the things I look for when I put people in the tournament, so especially the NIT. I just pick them. <laughs> there's, there's no formula. Um, the way you get in is by your character development, trash talk, and then kind of where you're ranked. Um, again, I don't want someone who's ranked number 15 in the NIT, unless their trash talk is unbelievable. So it's a mixture of your record, kind of being on the title page a little bit, and then the big part is trash talk. So people who don't really trash talk, historically, for the most part, there's are, you know, there are exceptions, of course. They don't get included in NIT. But wrestlers who consistently put an effort in their trash talk will you know, make an appearance in NIT. And sometimes I limit it to two because um, I think two in a 17-cycle period is, uh, is enough. 
Um, there might be a third one, but again, that'd be like that's you being in every single one of them. So making it once, fantastic. Making it two, great. Don't really expect the third one. Yeah. Um, by that time, you should be out of the league. So, but other than that, I was really impressed with the cycles trash talk. I want you guys to keep it up. We are going to have our next pay per view. It's to be season beatings, and it will be take place during the holiday cycle. So this is Luther's Alexander's plan. Because he is having it in Russia, so it'll be a pay per view in Russia. And this is Luther Alexander's plan to, you know, instead of you, your wrestler, spending time with your family on Christmas, he's going to drag everyone to Russia with him so that they spend Christmas with him. Because right. <laughs> he's a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, again, great trash talk. But I want to definitely shout out like Neo Dragon. He did a really great job this cycle. Like Vic Villains, uh, trash talk I thought was really awesome. So it's stuff like that, you know, that's what I'm looking for um, in terms of TT, you know, overall. So let's, uh, we're, we're going to talk a little bit about the IWAR in, at large. Yeah, so uh, one, the IWAR draft is still in the works. You mm. still have time to declare. But people have begun to send us their wrestler profiles, pictures, stats, ring entrance, you know, accomplishments. Pictures, the we need draft. pictures. Right, yeah, we need more pictures because... That's going to help make the preview draft issue work so well. Because I will pick Adrian Adonis for every single one that is in a picture. That's right. <laughs> It'll be Ke- – oh, God, what's the guy's name? He was an AWA wrestler. He was, like, he was like their version of like Great Muta, but he was terrible. <laughs> it was a Kabuki? Endo Nagasaki. Oh, person. yes. He was just terrible. Like, oh, man, he sucks. Bobby Saba Simba. Yeah. Bound for Glory, Tag Team Derby, 7th Triple D Cup, all – about to launch. I making one last push, to try to get as many people as I can in. We have about a week to go, so you have time to enter. Uh, it's only one dollar a wrestler for Bound for Glory. The draft is free. The Derby is three dollars, and the tag, uh, sorry, the Triple D Cup six man tournament is two dollars per team. Mm-hmm. So, those are all big events coming up. More info, of course, at the IWR magazine. So join and be merry. And I got to really put those brackets together. <laughs> and don't forget about the events that they're running over in the All Star League um, as mm-hmm. well. I, I've joined it because I want to get my free matches and stuff. So, um, sure. And this was my first uh, my first uh, cycle there. And I see that the DOD is over there. Uh, they are. They're creating ruckus and uh, making some noise. So I'm glad to see them as, over there as well. So stay tuned for that, folks. Yes. Okay. So for Matt Riley, I am. 